This problem asks us to use truth tables to show that the statement on the left, Q or the compound statement P and Q, is equivalent to the statement on the right, which is Q and the compound statement P implies Q are equivalent to each other. Now, what you've got to understand about this is when you're asked to find if something is equivalent, some logical statement is equivalent to another logical statement, what they're really asking you to do is this. To show that two logical statements are equivalent, you need to construct the truth table for each one. So do the truth table for the left-hand statement, do the truth table for the right-hand statement, and then you're only going to have equivalence between the two statements if the truth table values that correspond within each table are, acts, are absolutely identical. In other words, the truth values produced by the left-hand truth table and the truth, ta truth values for the right-hand um, statement are the same. So you've got to have the truth table for the left-hand statement and the truth table for the right-hand statement coming out with the exact same thing. So to do that, you can do it in several different ways. The way I'm going to do it is to sort of combine them into one big table. You don't have to do that. You can do them each completely separately if that makes you feel better. But I'm just going to create a column where I'm working with the left-hand statement here and just write these down once. And then I'm going to have another column when I get to this one and I'm going to work with that. And that, that just makes the work a little more compact. But you can do them as two totally separate truth tables if you like. Now, by now, you're used to the technique I use. On the first row, I actually put in T and T for everything, both P and Q or T. So I would get true or true and true. And I'm just going to work my way down. In the second one, I'm going to put a true in for P, and I'm going to put a f F in for, for Q. So I end up with F or P is true, so it would be T, and Q is false, so it would be F. And then moving down, this time I'm reversing it. P is false, but Q is true. So I get true or, remember P is false this time, false and, but Q is true, so it would be true. And then move down to the last one, they're both going to be false, so I'll get false or false and false. Now I'll move back up and continue simplifying. So I'll use my equivalent symbol. And now I'm going to work inside the parentheses. And this is an and. Don't forget, you need these truth tables in your head. We're doing an and. The truth table for an and. There's only one case where and is true, and that's if they're both true. So an and is only true if they're both true. So I'm looking at that and in parentheses. It's only true if they're both true. That's the only case inside the parentheses where they're both true. So it's going to be true, false, false, false. So I'm going to write that down. So that is true and true is true. But the rest of these in parentheses are going to be false. So I've got false or false. Here I've got true or false. And here I've got false or false. One more step should do it on the left. True or true. Now I'm doing ors. I was doing ands a minute ago, but now I'm doing ors. So I go back and remind myself the truth table for or, there's only one case where an or is false, and that's if both pieces are false, both P and Q are false. Otherwise, an or is true. So unless they're both false, and the only place they're both false, well, actually, there are two places here and here. So that will be a false, that will be a false. So the other two cases must be true. Okay. Now move over here and do the same thing for this one. So now I take the, the uh, four combinations and work on the, the right hand side. So I put true in for P and Q. So I get uh, true 
and true implies true. Okay. Then moving down, I, I keep P true, but I make Q false. So if Q is false, I get false and now P this time is true, so it would be T, but Q has changed to false, so that'd be false. Moving down here, I've flipped it now. P is false, but Q is going to be true. So I get true and remember P now is false. So I get false implies and Q is true. So I do true. And lastly I make them both false. So I get false and false implies false. Now I move over and continue simplifying. Inside the parentheses I have an implication. I hope by now it's second nature but just for completeness I'll go back and remind you the implication truth table has only one case where you have a false and that is if the P is true and the Q is false then you get a false otherwise it's true so this is the only case where there's a false with an implication everything else is true so you're looking for true implies false to be false and everything else is going to be true for an implication so true implies false is going to be false there and that's the only one of those you have so if you can copy this part down because that's not changing yet. So I'll just actually go ahead and do that. You got true and false and true and and false and. Just makes it a little bit easier. No, 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 that's changing. Okay, the true implies true is true. The true implies false. That's the one case where an implication is false when true implies false. So that's false. Uh, false implies true is true. False implies false is true. Okay, almost done. It's tedious but not difficult. Now we're dealing with an and. Well, we've done the ands before, but just to remind yourself, in the case of an and, there's only one place where an and is true, and that's if both P and Q are true. I remember that by saying it's only true if they're both true for an and. So going back to the ands, they're only true if they're both true. Well, that's they're both true there and they're both true there but they're not both true in any other place so those must be false now really from there you can see whether those two uh, statements are equivalent to each other but as I said before I think the way I do this and put my preliminary work inside the table creates a lot of clutter so I I like doing it that way but I pay for doing it that way by taking a little bit of extra time to get rid of the clutter so what I would do at this point just to make it easier on me and you too probably is just to copy down this and get rid of all the preliminary work so you get T F T F same thing over here just get rid of all the preliminary work and just copy down the, the punch line T F T F now remember, the two statements have to have identical truth values in each table for their corresponding values. In other words, for TT, they both turn out true. For TF, they both turn out false. For FT, they both turn out true. And for FF, they both turn out false. So these number, these uh, truth values have to match line by line. So the, they're both the same. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. They just have to be the same. They're both the same. They're both the same they're both the same and they're both the same now if you get that that shows you that the equiv the statements are equivalent so therefore the two statements are equivalent and if there's any difference at all if there's any difference at all if that had been a false and that had been a true any difference at all then those two statements would not be equivalent it's a fairly simple concept, you have to be careful.